Uh, is what else am I doing? I've been, like, we just been, <laughs> I, I did my laundry and not just like some laundry. I did literally all the fucking laundry. Like there is no more laundry to do. Hey, uh, hey Kenny, can you just change your clothes so I have more laundry to do? Yeah. This has been, been exciting it's stuff, boys. Been exciting stuff. I officially filed for unemployment today. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And then, <laughs> I filed for unemployment and then, it, and then literally took a bong grip. <laughs> Do the opening line, man. Yeah, hurry up. Let's hurry up, thing. man. In three. God. Two. Welcome to Two Steak. Yes, I can do your job. Podcast. My name is Aaron hey, Barton, as always. Hey, this is the number 50 episode. <laughs> it is number 50. This is the big one. Oh, we should 50 be excited 50. about this. Oh, man. Welcome to Two Dollar Steak, a pro nice. wrestling podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Barnum. Joining me today, as always, Cookie. Yep. Big Mike. Hello. And unemployed Tolbert. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Shit's about to get real. You're going to... Are you... When the school season starts back up, which mm. we don't know when, you could be a bus driver, and then <laughs> you could be Otto, who likes to get blotto. Hey, kids. <laughs> don't. Hey, man, if you need Benny's, it's like... You are Otto. <laughs> Just listen to metal and smoke sweet. That's and all rides Otto? the city bus, drives the city bus. <laughs> hey, kids. Hey, little dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, we're laughing. It feels good to, to get back together and, and do shit together because this has been a fucking crazy yeah. week out of each one of our lives. Yeah. The weather today yeah. hasn't helped either. It's been all doom and gloom. Yeah, yesterday was decent. <laughs> today. Yeah, at least it was sunny. outside, man. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. You know, things are... Uh, we haven't had any like good news lately. Uh, they no. canceled our rugby season. I mean, I don't the know if that's good or bad. Canceled. Everything is yeah. canceled. My Everything. life is canceled. Why is she's canceled? <laughs> your wife or your life? life? Oh, my, <laughs> life. my wife is very much in quarantine with yeah. me right now. So last week, Tober was depressed about WrestleMania. Now Tober's just depressed. What a way to kick off your first year of marriage. Yeah, quarantine. Hey, man, her. like you, you, I love her. Yeah, right, you get to, <laughs> <laughs> you get to like learn more about each other, like. You know, try new yeah. things, get pegged. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're they just real the, bored. The male G spot. <laughs> <laughs> we're just real bored. <laughs> Man, yeah. so yeah, so we're 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 doing this uh, from Casa de Varnum and um, trying to keep our space. We're trying to. We yeah. we are all spaced out pretty good. We're uh, we're here. To keep sp- you had dinner at my house three times this week. <laughs> Yeah, you're socialized, socially isolating with with the wrestling group. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm I'm socially isolating with you guys. Yeah, it's okay. Together. Yeah, I mean, shit. What's what else are you gonna? Yeah, do? what else what am I gonna do? I've done so many chores. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, uh, again. Tears have welled up. Yeah, dude, so many chores, so many things. Just oh man, it's like, I think I'll clean out this closet now. Yeah, you know, I raked I'll- my entire backyard today. Jesus. My entire backyard. You didn't have any leaves in your yard. I raked it. <laughs> that oak tree. Manicure. Yeah, like it looks good now. So like, I I don't know. Like things are things are. At it's kind of it's kind of nice. It gives me time to. My life is very much still just kind of going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you would you like to come do some uh, yard work at my house, that'd be great. Okay, Tober will do it for a. a, a a crowler, right? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I'll eat some nerd rope and I'll uh, get right to it. Yeah, tell us about that nerd rope. So, did you, you eat know, the whole thing? No, I still have some left. Oh, so, I I don't know. It, uh, marijuana being legal in most states now, you know, things become more available. I don't think it's majority. N- yet. No, <laughs> it's not a majority. Wait, yet. what? Not yet. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so uh, it, it being Wilmington, a college town, we have a few things that roll in town from time to time, and one of those things being <laughs> fell off a truck. Edibles. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a four hundred milligram nerd rope. Okay, it's been great for this this time that we're in. 
Is it? Yeah, it, it's been awesome. Because <laughs> weed always makes time go by much slower for me. Uh, and I, I, I this know. is this is the time of my life where I want things to go by much quicker. So like to get out of this, you know, the shtick that we're that we're going through this this shit. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just makes things more interesting. <laughs> Oh, man, we I, we did get together the other night and we, we watched did. some classic WrestleMania matches. We watched instead the, of SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We That's we watched great. Dynamite. Dynamite was Dynamite good this was week. Great. Dynamite, Dynamite was, great. was great. Raw and SmackDown are shitting the bed. Yeah, Cookie, we got yeah. together for Dynamite at my house. Oh, thanks, house man. Wednesday. Thanks for telling me. We said it in the chat, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It was, it was the kidding. first official day of all the bars and restaurants being yeah. closed down completely. So, uh, you know, we had some liquor, we put out a good spread, and we all stood about five feet apart from each other and watched some wrestling. Yeah, it was, it was, it was de- decent. And then we watched uh, some classic WrestleMania matches. We watched we because we watched the, the first part of the Dark Side of the Ring um I have, Chris Benoit thing. I have not watched that hey, yet. I know you watch it. I can't yeah, wait. Dude. It's I really wait. sad. I, I believe it. The second part is going to probably entire, be like, worse. Part, part one is just hyping him up to like where you're like sympathetic and you're like, man, this guy's a really oh, nice Oh, and guy. then part two is obviously going to be the drop. Well, it just, ends. Part one ends with, with the, the murder. Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh. Well, no, with the announcement that they found him dead. Right, yeah. right, right. You didn't know it was murder. But we I watched guess. that instead of SmackDown because it was a lot more uplifting than SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's how I liked it. That's a good one. Um, instead of watching SmackDown, we instead wanted to hear about a double murder. Murder hunt. Yeah. yeah. But then we watched we watched the Chris Benoit match because Mike hasn't seen a lot of his stuff. Really? Never. That was no, cool. I mean, we watched it and it was sad, but then Aaron pulled up the network and we started watching all the Eddie and Chris Benoit matches. Matches that were yes. mentioned in the episode. Oh, so yeah. Did you yeah, watch his WrestleMania amazing. match? We yes. we watched the triple threat match yep. with uh, Shawn Michaels, a bleeder, bleeding Shawn oh, Michaels, my good God. God. high up there on the nudist so and Triple H, which also bled a match. shitload as well. Yeah, it was wild. And then and then after that, we watched. I I wanted to watch HBK versus Ric Flair. I just had and to we see did. It. Did you uh, want to depress yourself a little bit more? I'm sorry. I love you, Cookie. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> they, I mean, it's such a good it, sweet chin yeah, music. It was, great. it was good. Pin one, two, three. It was a good match. It was a great match. Was, so, so other than that, we're we're doing, you know, things around the house and and Mike isolating, bought a, reading books. Mike bought a minivan. I did. Oh yeah. People people on Reddit were shitting on all the car dealerships that are still open, and they're like, "Who would be buying a car at a time like this?" Oh, like, Mike. I uh, <laughs> Mike will. I bought a car. <laughs> <laughs> traded in. I traded in my dream car. Which was Why a did you do that, man? Got it because I got a baby on the way, and I got a baby now, and I need the space, and the forerunner's kind of tight inside. Let me let me tell you how that much of a dream car like like a forerunner is for Mike. I remember when we went to go see the Black Panther in theater. The entire time, there's like all those scenes with those like tricked out forerunners. Yeah. Mike, the entire time was just like. Oh man, look Except, at that. Hey, you know what? After they filmed that though, they they sold those four runners. The only reason they didn't sell real quick is because they were the two wheel drive. They were decked out, lifted, all sorts and they were two wheel yeah. drive. No, oh, man. What a waste. Stupid. That's a waste. Stupid. But yeah, I got a Honda Odyssey uh, twenty sixteen. <laughs> Only uh, 14,000 miles, so I got a good deal on that. I'm ready to just embrace this middle-class married man lifestyle. Oh, I'm more excited that uh, Mike now has a, a DVD player in the DVD back of his player. car. You know what? I can fit a lot of dudes in that thing if we want to go to a wrestling match. <laughs> Mike, uh, look I th- love it. I love this idea. Look down at those two bottom shelves right there on my DVD rack and, and go ahead and pick you out a couple wrestling DVDs on the December bottom. Dirt. I was actually December I was actually December staring at the, uh, the Edge one. <laughs> the, the Edge one's good. Uh, the Ric Flair. I've got multiple Ric Flair. Yeah, Randy Flair. Savage one. Hey, and Ultimate Call. Aaron, is December to dismember in there? No, fuck December <laughs> to dismember. <laughs> I hate it. Made me so mad. Oh, Maybe we'll so buy him money, for a hundred. We'll just get him on a DVD of December to this. <laughs> I lived it. I spent I already spent sixty dollars on that fucking pay per view. Mm. And we and, we, and after we did that, Byron, one of one of our listeners and, and a, a real cool dude, he runs the uh, the Red Hair uh, Brewing in in Shalot sends us a message on Instagram and said that he was actually at that event. And we're like, oh. <laughs> That's even worse. That's even oh, worse, Byron, man. I'm sorry. He had dude. to sit through it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good God. <laughs> All right, uh, let's let's talk about uh, so on this week's episode we are talking about empty arena matches. We're kind of putting it into perspective with with what's going on today. There has been a lot of empty arena matches on television. We've the last watched them two all weeks. this week. We've watched them all. We've compared 
companies, productions, right? If you will, I felt like AEW did it better this week. I was going to say AEW out of the the ballpark. Yeah, hundred percent. So I I think the best thing about that is that they had their own people down there. Exactly, it made sense. You know, there's people there. Yeah. MJF heckling, like yeah, all this betting stuff. on the matches. Side was bets. Perfect. Yeah. That was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. And, and it, you look at what they're doing on WWE. It's it's tough. Like it, it is tough to you know get that kind of emotion out. But I think the three matches that we have picked for this week's episode, they are able to get the most out of the empty arena stipulation. And I think that 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 maybe they need to look back in history and see that you can do interesting stuff when there's nobody in there. And I think AEW has done it really well. So let's talk about some wrestling. Cruising the streets Looking for some action My radio is blasting On my rock and roll station All right, for our first matchup, Big Mike, you have got Oh, Terry Funk against Jerry the King Lawler in an empty arena match. Yes, Memphis Coliseum. What was the date on this year? You know? uh, it was like, night. Oh, if you didn't tell me, I, I, I would just keep going. I'll, I'll okay, well, the, the fun thing is, so Memphis Coliseum was its own Coliseum. Like, that's where yeah, they did all they of did the all Memphis their wrestling. Yes. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, it, it, they, they say several times it's like 11,300 capacity. Which is massive, and if they were doing that, what, what do they do one a week? Yeah, so they they did one a week there, and then like it was, and then they would do special stuff there too. So, so that, I mean, go ahead. Originally aired April twenty fifth, nineteen eighty one. All right, um, and it's it is very much a late seventies, early eighties kind oh, of vibe to it. So good. Uh, the the video opens with an announcer kind of discussing, you know, what's potentially going to happen, and if this thing goes off, we'll we'll air it, and if it doesn't, you'll never see this. Uh, uh, Lance Russell, and a very good character throughout yeah, this. So, I was going to ask you: Is Lance like Lance is in on it, right? Yeah, he knows Lan- it's. Well, he knows Lance it's was was like the Memphis, like one of their announcers, and I think he had like a a, a storied history and like journalism just, and stuff yeah, before. Well, it. So like, I love Lance because one, he's got a Bob Barker stick, Mike. Yep. He uh, in, at one point he while waiting for the wrestlers to arrive, he lights up a cigarette. I, that is my favorite thing. <laughs> he's just like he puts the cigarette in his mouth, he lights it, and then I think Terry shows up and he yeah. like he immediately he just like throws it, has to it throw out. it and stomp it out. To give you a further description, Lance looks like the type of guy, and I don't want to, you know, put down Lance or anything, but he would definitely slap his secretary's ass. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was. So, <laughs> so when I was working in news, we had a guy that had been in news for forty years when I started working at the TV station. He was our sports guy. His name was Mark Haggard, and Mark Haggard had the exact same voice as Lance Russell, just smoking packs upon packs of cigarettes just this very old school 70s and 80s journalism kind of guy and I just remember um, he had this very old school mindset and he never missed slots so like he always made deadline and I remember one time I missed deadline and he comes up to me and he says Aaron one time I shit my pants and still made deadline what what was wrong with you (laughs) I shit my pants and still made deadline. And I'm like, well, all right. <laughs> well, there I feel like that was out of context. Like, did he shit it right then? And then no, went, no, went no. the shit in his pants went and finished? Or One like- time I shit my pants. Like, he was driving back, like, trying to make deadline. <laughs> Couldn't stop because he knew if he stopped, like... He wouldn't make deadlines, so he shit his pants in the car on the way back. Oh my God. <laughs> so his deadline, like, you filmed a bunch it, of shit. Yeah, you have yeah, to get yeah. back to editing this yeah, time. Yeah. Okay. Is this your idol? Is this why you've shit your pants? I the time? loved, like, Mark Haggard, his wife was a mama son at the local strip club, so he would, like, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was just this very conservative like always listen to Rush Limbaugh and like just very conservative dude but his his wife was a Filipino mama son and he'd always be like Aaron uh, can you bring me some shrimp heads? And I'm like, what the? Who is it? <laughs> He's like, we can make a very good broth out of it. My wife, very good Vietnamese broth. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right, hags. 
Hopefully he doesn't listen to this. Oh, he probably doesn't. If he does, he'd be like, I love him. He called me the boy. Like how, how Homer Homer would always call Bart the boy. The and boy. He, he's like, do you mean the boy? <laughs> Whenever he was like referring to me. So the the well, back to wrestling. The idea Sorry. about this match is that Terry has challenged Jerry because um, Terry just, I don't know, doesn't like Jerry or something like that. But the stipulation that he... He told Lance to announce to the world was that there's no fans, no officials, no police. No home cooking on uh, on, on Jerry the King Lawler's... Are you going to finish No, I was, I, you I, looked I at me weird. Well, I was just waiting for you to finish the line so I can... We just now had no home cooking. You know, like there was no home field advantage gotcha, because, gotcha. because Terry was, was somebody Perfect. coming from, from Texas. Mono y mano. Anyway, Terry makes his entrance finally. Um, <laughs> and Terry's just swearing up a storm. Um, he's swearing at the announcer about Lawler, um, just curse, cursing left and right. And Lance is like, Terry, uh, can you mind your language, please? And uh, He says, he says uh, Terry, I'd like to be able to use this footage later. Please watch your language. And as soon as he says that, they have to beep out the next like five <laughs> lines because Terry's like, fuck, fuck, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like a string of beeps. And, and it's it, so good. It's so funny. He got more offended by him saying exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like telling a toddler not to do something. Yeah. And, um, so uh, Jerry or Terry's like yelling at Lance and he's like, get in there, count him out. I'll get, I'll get in there and count him out. And so uh, Terry does. Terry gets in the ring, counts him out, <laughs> continues to yell and still wondering where uh, Jerry is. Um, and then he, my, my favorite part actually of this whole thing was when he was like, is he, is he, there's no apron on the ring. And he goes, is he, is he under the ring? Is he, where, where is, is he, he under the stands? Where, Where is, is he? he? <laughs> uh, Terry does this for seven minutes. Yes. <laughs> Terry is just ranting and raving like a nice, uh, aggressive Texas boy for he, seven minutes. And it's a one-man show. It's still it, entertaining. It is, and it is, it's just Terry yelling about things, and Lance is just trying to calm the man down yes. the whole <laughs> effing time. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Finally, Lawler arrives. He's got his big giant crown and a big flowy robe. I, He's wearing all white. I think that's one of my favorite parts. It's just all the and Travis has it. You can see it in our yeah. art today. It's just this this knight in shining armor just appears yeah. in in the distance. And uh, so that you know now now Terry's just really up on it. So he's you know swearing at him up and down still. Uh, says he says he's gonna break Jerry's crown. Right, I'm, I'm gonna okay. break it. Lawler looks so young. He does. He looks. He looks odd. He looks. I, I. I can't. I don't know. He looks about. I think as it's young the goatee. As, I think it's the goatee that throws. Yeah, he me looks off. like a guy I used to work with at the rec center, which like, which kind of throws me off. But like, Jerry looks like he should just, you know, be driving a truck. He looks as young as the women that he likes. Oh, oh, oh man. Um, Oh, was that too soon? Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so 30 years, I was like, 40 40 years, years, ago. years. Lawler's met, like walking towards the ring, just telling Terry to basically shut up. And then Terry's like, what do you got? Wait, you got a gun? You got a knife? I ain't got no damn gun. <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got a gun, funk. <laughs> just, again, this is so weird and still hilariously entertaining. Uh, we actually get into the wrestling ring. They have a little standoff. We actually get some wrestling. Again, no referee, no bell. They just kind of they just start fighting it's each other. It's just a brawl. <laughs> uh, they, you know, they're going in and out. I love empty chair spots oh. with an empty arena because you you can tell that they're connected. Yes. Which, as as somebody who used to set these types of chairs up. It just angered me to no end when they're like bending the little because you have these tiny little latch yeah. ha- or hooks on the sides of the chairs that you have yeah. to set into each one. Oh yeah. Uh, and so you know Terry hits hits the chairs and they it's like the wave occurs, <laughs> and then he kind of like makes a point to fall into even more chairs. He body Terry, surfs across. Yeah, him. yeah. And then he pick, of course Terry's going to pick up a chair, but he picks up two because they're connected. Throws them at Jerry. Um, and it, it is just this. It's just a brawl back and forth. At one point, he, he grabs the section stand, breaks off the square part of it yes. that has the number four, and it starts hitting Jerry Lawler in the head with it. Um, <laughs> that whole section is going to be lost now. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, start like, falling where, where in. Where do we go? go? Where do we go? But yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, they're not doing anything special. It's just kind of like hugging and punching and stuff. Um, they they get outside the ring and. <laughs> 
And what does Terry grab like a wooden stake? What is? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like know, a, know what it was. Maybe he brought it to the ring, but like he it, did something. He broke something. Yeah, okay. he broke it and it, made a stake. Okay, out of yeah. It. So he has this stake, and he's like he's he's trying to get Lawler's eye out. And the whole time, again, the whole time, Lance is Lance is trying to like be this like. Oh no, guys! Come on, let's let's not do. Come, come on, Terry! Don't come do that. Terry. Ain't no, do that, no, Terry. no, not as I, Terry. <laughs> not as I. Tell me about the guttural <laughs> screams that are coming out of Terry. Well, that's what I, I, I uh, Terry. At this point, they're brawling in and out, and Terry is just his his lost his voice. I think from yelling for seven minutes before this whole thing started, and so he's like, "Ask him, ask him, Lance." <laughs> and he's like, He's I'm like, gonna take his eye. I'm gonna take his eye. It sounds like he's suing a pig, and it's just it's just, it's just so <laughs> over the top. But it's so Terry Funk, and it's so phenomenal. Oh my god! Um, oh. And so eventually, Terry is trying to get Lawler's eye with this stake, and Lawler gets out of it. In which I I actually like this spot. Lawler, Terry's elbow still kind of bent a little bit. Lawler kicks the elbow. Spike into Terry's eye, and Terry starts gushing blood, <laughs> like gushing blood, and he's like, "It's total role reversal." Like Lawler just kind of starts walk, just walks away, and yeah. Terry's like, <laughs> damn near crying. He's like, ah, "Go, duck, go, duck, my eye, my eye." Lance, Lance, don't leave me like this. Lance, don't leave me. Wait, Lance, call an ambulance. Call, 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 call a doctor. Call a doctor. And Lance's like. All right, Terry, I'll go call a doctor. Don't leave me like this. Like, I'll call a doctor. I'm going to go call a doctor. <laughs> where's Where's Lawler? Where's, <laughs> he's, he's still he's still a chicken. He's, he's a coward. He's yellow. He's yellow. He's yellow. Pig. <laughs> Pig. <laughs> and it, and that's pretty much exactly how the, the last four minutes of the video sound. <laughs> that was it. That was it. It was the it greatest is, thing it's ever. It's so chaotic. Because Jerry pulls the uh, Homer backing into the bushes. Yeah. Yes. Like, he washes his, he literally washes Jerry his Jerry Lawler just had, it's a fucking walk off home yeah, run. He just go. Punted the stake into ter- Terry's eye and just literally yeah. walked out. It looks back like a couple times. Yeah, the, like, the uh, last three minutes are just Mike, I have Terry's two questions. Yeah, One, good. how much wrestling was in that match? Uh, it was, I mean, it was a... F- I think it was a 17 minute video. There was probably f- three minutes, four minutes of wrestling. But how entertaining was it? It was very, oh, dude, it's phenomenal. <laughs> I, you know me, I'm all about a story. Yeah. I don't, I, and, and like they did well enough. I have no idea what the actual story to this me entire either. thing is before or after, but no. I was highly entertained the yes. entire time. Yes. When, when we we watched it for the first, like I had found it that like early this week and we watched it. Was it Monday night that Something we watched like that, it? Yeah. And the entire time I'm just like, God dang. God bless Terry. This Fox, is man. so just it's so good. Yeah. Like and, I, and, and it really is in the sense of Terry just coming in, just like talking all this mad crap and all this sort of stuff. You know, and then by and the he's end of winning it, the match and he's about to and then like he becomes this like he becomes a yellow belly pig. Yeah. And just and, but him his character is just so funny. It's fun. oh, I love it. His great. scream like he just starts making these like very high pitched like screams. Like it <laughs> it's like if you punch your brother back, like if you're in a fight and he's like, ah, ah! <laughs> like you know, trying to be over the top to get the attention of somebody. You, uh, and now that the moratorium is over, we see where mankind got his scream. That's it right. Makes a lot of sense see? Now. now do you guys do you guys ever remember um the movie or the movie portrayal of Odysseus's Odyssey. The movie portrayal, yeah, the like one the, that was on NBC. Yeah, like the like the, like like the multi thir- twenty years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, do, I have it on VHS somewhere. I, I don't. Right, well, uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm just going to talk to Aaron. I had to he's, watch. He's it a culture. Like, I had to watch <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> who was it? <laughs> it was uh, no. Armid uh, uh, would played uh, uh, Odysseus. Yeah. Well, so you, I, I. So I, do you remember the the Cyclops? Yes. Yeah. That's what this. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had to crawl on the belly yes. of the dead. They had to put the dead sheep on them and like yes. crawl out. Oh. Yeah, well, we watched that in like twelfth grade English class because my <laughs> teacher would literally lock the door. There's a lot of sex in there. Put on a movie and put his head on the desk and go to sleep. And be like, wake see, me up if see, anyone knocks on I, the door. I, I watched this in tenth grade English class because my teacher would just go outside and start chain smoking. <laughs> <laughs> She was a holdover from yeah. the previous administration. She had uh, similar upbringings there on her English education, Mike. What the hell is going on in the education system? Dude? Hey, Cookie, why, we, uh, we didn't grow up in the suburbs, buddy. Damn, dude, this is crazy. This is what eventually led to my unemployment. Oh, I, I definitely, I had an eighth grade science teacher that got busted multiple times for having uh, schnapps in his desk. <laughs> 
It's just peppermint. Yeah. And so, uh, so, and I, I, I got one time I got put in a remedial class. <laughs> Oh, like, there it is. It my there it is. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're unemployed. But, all right, all right, Do you remember what up. Bart Simpson went into? The, <laughs> it was a lot like that. It's like, do kids just misunderstood. He doesn't deserve this. But, all right, you know what they put in charge? At South U High School, you know what they put in charge of middle classes? The coach. The washed up, like, old basketball coach. Oh, God. They kept a fifth of fucking beam in his drawer. <laughs> and would pour it in his coffee cup. And our yeah. remedial classes would be him sipping whiskey out of his coffee cup. Oh, let me show you kids how you write a chick. <laughs> like, so ridiculous. Um, I just kind of failed the end of year test, and I need to study for that. <laughs> Oh, well, well, with that, let's no. talk about social media no. this week, that's because so that's about scary. all we could do this week, was get on the internet. No, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, social media, what? Tolbert gained a follower. He's up to 100. <laughs> we're up to 117 Everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's bored out there, Mike. <laughs> um, we tweeted, what did we, did, or did you Instagram anything this week, Tolbert? A couple things. No, you didn't. The last thing was that hand, the hand they needed out. episode fifty. The hand sanitizer on your knuckles. You need to you need to up, up, refresh that page there, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Did well, you just do something while you were in the bathroom? Yeah, there's a couple more. Posts. I Instagrammed the beer delivery. Oh yeah, group because you know we you know, we gotta <laughs> we gotta help our friends. We have two friends who are being responsible. <laughs> So, you didn't even fucking do that, Tolbert. <laughs> I thought you did that. No, no, I did it. So we have two friends who are being responsible, self-quarantining, so I Instagrammed the beer delivery I gave to them. Oh, well, um, but yeah, go, Tolbert. And the wonderful art. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, which I created a new hashtag because I was like, we need to hashtag Travis's art. His official hashtag is now $2 Travis Art. All right, I like it. Oh, I see okay. that, yeah. I can so see that. follow good us good on Instagram and Twitter at number two dollar steak underscore to see all of Tolbert's hard work. <laughs> Though, <laughs> Tom, you you literally said you've hey, got all the time in the world. I, I just noticed no this. No content, buddy. No content. <laughs> no There's con plenty of content, <laughs> boys. Like you've been you've been just playing Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So I I honestly just noticed this and. Um, Travis might make the shit list because he didn't change Travis? the number. It's, Tra epi it's oh, episode it should be 50. fifty. It He's should be forty nine on yeah. Wait, wait, no, no, that. Do you know who did that? The dumbass that's sitting right beside you. Oh, Tober did this? Tober took it from our thing. He's changed it on the fucking thing. That, I, I didn't even... Oh. Let me look at the drive. Let did, me look at the drive. You, did you steal the who's art getting before all the, the shit art list? was finished? Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Who's oh. getting on the shit list? Oh. Oh. No, and Tober fucks it up. Uh, fucked it up. <laughs> Sorry, Travis. You're not. We're crossing him off the shit list there. Two dollar uh, Travis art. We'll I'm looking at Travis's in. art. It literally says fifty, 50. right here. Uh, Tober, you I fucked up that so one. You going pencil, go pencil me in there? <laughs> <laughs> Tober, hey, what have you done all week? <laughs> fucked up Instagram. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I drank a lot of Negronis. <laughs> I, uh, you did. I've yeah. seen you. Every time I see Tober, he's got a glass of like red something. He's, he's turning into like Julian from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> oh, God. Like, like it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dr drunk hangman, we got drunk Tober. Uh, Twitter, we're up to 269. Thank you, Sexbot. Uh, oh, one of, one you, of those sexbot. new followers was a Sexbot. And uh, ironically, number 269. Hey. Hey um, nice. What uh we had a, we had some decent stuff. Aaron, what, explain the uh the one tweet you had with the pokey thing. The pokey is it pokey? Thing? What's poochie? Poochie. Yeah. Oh. What, what is that? Oh, that's a you Simpsons need, character. You, you sir, need to log on to Disney Plus and watch some Simpsons. Yeah, well, it, it's so in the in the Simpsons, the, they have a TV show called Itchy and Scratchy. Like it's yeah, a cartoon. That's, I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Itchy and Scratchy, right there, they're on my my shelf. Yeah. So Itchy and Scratchy were going through uh, hard times. <laughs> And like the the slump, their their ratings were slumping. So they decided to get past these hard times. They introduced a new oh, crazy really? character named Poochie the Dog. You mean Rob Gronkowski? And it is <laughs> very much how they introduced Rob Gronkowski <laughs> on Friday Night SmackDown. We watched it did what, well. Yeah. So. We watched like Gronkowski enter the ring, and I'm like, Wait, Back let's go. go I just want to watch somebody <laughs> kill his family. Instead of him. So, guys, I haven't come up with the. Sorry to interrupt, You're Mike. Fine. Sorry, I haven't come up with the rules and stipulations yet. But we are going to watch WrestleMania all fucking two nights of it, right? 
But uh, we're going to come up, or I am going to come up with a Rob Gronkowski WrestleMania drink drinking game. game? <laughs> yes. I love it. And uh, we will post the rules for our listeners to follow along on Twitter and Instagram once we come up with them. But uh, will you get a Rob Gronkowski every time? Tattoo? Every time, I think the first one. Every time he imitates or does a Ric Flair move, you drink Ugh. for sure. Every time he dances, you drink. Well, then I'm you're hammered. Up, I'm gonna come up with a lot more. What a douche! So, what a fucking douche! That's the only yeah. way to make the best of. The sh- yeah, they're, you anyway. know they're taping that this week. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I heard. Anyway, Dude. back to that. Um, but I mean, mostly it's just Aaron tweeting this week. Refer- was it? Yeah, yeah, you did a lot. Who, I did, did, who did the Vader gif? I love that. That was, that was, Aaron. That I, was half-ass <laughs> Vader gif. Honestly, where he's just like, yeah. the, the one that I thought would do the best because a WWE wrestler Scott Dawson actually liked it was the picture of from Wednesday that I, tw- I, I tweeted out of <laughs> us social distancing while watching wrestling and somebody flagged it. Yeah, well, apparently Someone it was... flagged it? Yeah, yeah I, so I've been... I've been uh, I just do random hashtags, but this one was all appropriate. There was like coronavirus, coronavirus update. We're sitting all at least seven feet from each other. Yeah. We all live on the same street. Well, I don't. Well, Aaron practically lives on there. We live on the but same it, uh, street. <laughs> I thought that would do better than that, but it didn't. Aaron did get a reply from Joey Janela in one of our uh, tweets. Right. I, I was so sad that... That uh, so so the announcement was made that uh, GFW canceled Joey yes. Janela's spring break, and somebody asked... Joey Janela, who he was actually going to wrestle, and I said, I, well, I don't care about that. I want to know who Jeff Hart was going to wrestle. Yeah, Jeff Hart, <laughs> Jeff Joe, the Hitman Hart, Joey, Joey, <laughs> where are, are you? you? <laughs> that, but all, anyway, that is the best fucking. But, but anyway, ever. Joey Janela <laughs> replies to Aaron's going. <laughs> Kota Ibushi? <laughs> Kota Ibushi. <laughs> if it was Ibushi, I, I would have shit I think, my pants. Kota Ibushi. No, no. Kinta Kobayashi. Kinta, yeah, yeah. Any, anyway. Um, yeah, we, we had fun. So we're going to continue to try to have fun on our social media accounts. Tobert will try not to fuck up this week. It's at number two <laughs> dollar steak underscore. Still got to have that nerd rope left. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, God. Um... And with that, I'm going to step up onto my soapbox so I can get on my goddamn high horse. Let's All right, let's go. All right. So this... Is this the shit list? Yeah, this is going to okay. be the shit list. Okay, shit um, list. So no formal individuals have made the shit list, but there was a guy on Reddit. Okay. Right? Not re- wrestling related. And I, it got his post was so dumb, and he is such a shitty person, it got deleted before I could get his name. But to any of you dumb motherfuckers out there that don't think that this whole coronavirus thing is a big deal, I hate you because you're so <laughs> inept and you're such a fucking idiot. Because literally, the hospital, great right now, the hospital right now is gearing up for a fucking war. Like, we're literally clearing beds left and right. I'm going to be treating these people frontline defenders. Like, I get so emotionally irate like we, we joke about it we can joke yeah. about all this sort of stuff and we have for a couple months but like it's serious ca- now you kind of have to have like a gallows humor just yeah. to get by and and, yeah. and there are still people out there that just think it's not th- that big of a deal so I'm going to break it down real quick six degrees of separation has us connected to Donald Trump right, right? so think about 10 or 14 days of contact who you would come in contact with within six feet of your regular daily life for 10 days before you show any symptoms. So you may not know anybody who's immunocompromised. You may not know but anybody who's had a kidney transplant or, or had cancer or anything like this. But I guarantee fucking T, somebody you, you come into contact with does. And it's probably somebody you know and they have somebody they care about or who they live with and all this sort of stuff. So take the appropriate measures. Take this shit seriously. Like we can joke and all that sort of stuff, but don't be a dumb fuck like that motherfucker on Reddit. <laughs> I wish I knew his real fucking name so I go to his house and throw some eggs at it sneeze in his face <laughs> just, not as much as punch him I would, I would put hand sanitizer on like Zane did last week and slap that motherfucker across the Ooh, face to hurt. Get him, like, he needs to get those hands yeah like, right like, yeah. alright anyway take this shit seriously please for the love of God or I will find you and I'll do something terrible to you. I don't know what. Jesus Christ. He, uh, I'm going to break right. somebody's fucking legs over He's this. He's going to hawk a loogie on you. Yeah, I'm going to slap you like that guy's mama slapped him. And then I'll spit on you. Oh. Unknown Redditor, you made Big Mike's shit, shit list. list. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? All right, for the strong style, Cookie, uh, Cookie, 
you should feel honored. We have, I am. I really am. We had a 20, uh, was it 20 episode? Or I think 15, it was like a 15 week. It was a 15 week moratorium on one Mick Foley. And it's not Terry Funk, surprisingly, but rather I There will never, uh, mark my words, there will never be a moratorium on Terry Funk. I'm so if you ever do, you're yellow. <laughs> you're yellow. Oh, coward. Hey. <laughs> no, it's, like if Terry were to come up and say, no, Terry, you're booked. You're booked, Terry. You're booked. You're on the I'm show. So, I'm, just, I'm so excited because we were just kind of casually joking a couple weeks ago. We were like, when, when is that moratorium up? So it's a throwback to one of those episodes way back in like 30. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was 30. Because I think that I did the math 30, and like 50. Like anyway. So, Cookie, you have got uh, the Rock vs. Mankind Halftime Heat. This is the first time ever for Halftime Heat for the That's WWE. That's right. I, they only did it twice, and that was that was one of them. You know what? I was looking it up. They actually did it three times. What was the third one? The third one was Stone Cold's interview after neck surgery. Oh, nobody cares about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they, they called it Halftime Heat. That doesn't count. Anyway. A uh, little story behind this match. This was aired during the halftime show, the 1999 Super Bowl. This was the Denver Broncos against the Atlanta Falcons, which the Broncos ended up winning over my Dirty Birds. I do love the Dirty Birds. <laughs> I remember watching this. I used to love Jamal Anderson, man. At my parents' house, and I remember halftime heat being on. I'm like, Dad, we have to switch it over to you. Yeah, I did too. This. And he's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm like... We have to. Uh, let, let me let me do but some remember, research. It was 1999. 99. Yeah. I want to yeah, see yeah. who the actual like halftime performance was. Please. Now, uh, in the middle of this, uh, you have Kevin Kelly, right? Kevin Kelly is his name. Yes. And you have Shane McMahon on commentary for the actual Heat production. There was an actual TV show called Heat, and that show was airing at the same time. I'm asking. Oh my God! It was Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't see it anyway. Oh, oh, oh poor Stevie Wonder. We we instead watched Mankind and in The Rock instead of Stevie Wonder. Yep. Oh man, there's a, I'm sure there's a joke to be made there somewhere. <laughs> what what what, Aaron? I, Stevie dancing. Stevie is dancing. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, Do they have to like put people around the stage so it doesn't fall off? I, I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't know. He's got a buzzer. <laughs> he's got a I buzzer. Mean, he's, he's not really dancing. He's kind of just. Oh, he's dancing. Sauntering. <laughs> no, 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 he just jumped. It's, I don't know why. All right. Anyway, it's a terrible back, visual. Back to the anyway. Match. Kevin Kelly, Shane McMahon. They are doing commentary for uh, the TV show Heat. Yeah, Kevin Kelly, the the current voice of NJPW, the yes. previous voice of Ring of Honor. So this guy is definitely it, it, you will recognize his voice. Yes, and Shane McMahon. Yeah. Here comes the money himself. This is epic, though. This is WWF white hot time during the Monday Night War. Stone Cold, The Rock, and at this time, Mankind. They're all white hot right now. Uh, I believe my, Mankind had already won the title from The Rock on uh, an episode of Raw previously, I believe. From yeah, that'll second. put butts in seats. Yeah. That was the famous uh, end of the 86 weeks of uh, WCW. Yes, where WCW aired the results of it and people turned Turn, over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching this and uh, just jumping out of my seat. I mean, those are, those are some of the best. And only a handful of people have given me that reaction of like jumping out of my seat when someone wins the, the title. Mankind, Eddie Guerrero. Kofi Kingston and of course Finn Balor, my yeah. boy, my boy. <laughs> anyway, the idea hey, behind Cookie, is, how long did he hold that title? Yeah, how how long? Uh, not even a, what, two days. Ew, no, uh, I think it was one day. day. Yeah, he like hurt hours, his shoulder. Hours. I've seen you jump out of your seat for way more wins than that. <laughs> which one? Which one am I jumping? <laughs> 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 throw, throw him out there too, man. Uh, I've seen quite a. Quite Darby a few Allen, yeah, when <laughs> Darby <laughs> Allen wins. <laughs> the idea <laughs> behind this empty arena match is that mankind stole. Cookie 100. just likes twinks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you like big meat. We're, we're gonna have to add a Darby Allen stipulation <laughs> to the cookie count. Cookie just likes <laughs> twigs. He likes little white men. <laughs> it's cookie. two people. It's just Darby <laughs> Allen. I love Keith Lee. Keith Lee is not a twink. <laughs> no, he's not. Oh my god, that's a, that's a big boy. What if there's just a twink in a Keith Lee like bodysuit? <laughs> <laughs> like Men in Black in it. It's just, like he, Big Mama's house, if y'all ever seen that. He's just really a tiny white male. <laughs> Cookie's all about oh, it. Whatever. The idea he's behind this is he's attracted rematch. to what he's attracted to. Mankind sold $100,000 of The Rock's money and coerced him into a match. Uh, if he wanted to get the money back, he had to fight for his title. <laughs> and 
Here it comes to halftime heat. Start my countdown, damn it. <laughs> Cookies. <laughs> Co- top Cookies twinks. top four. Cookies top twinks. <laughs> Cookies top twinks. Darby <laughs> Allen. <laughs> That's number one. He's number one in your your count. Right what, who's the guy? Who's the guy that, on 205 that just got the giant chest tattoo? Jack Gallagher. Yeah. Oh, Gentleman Jack. Yeah. He's in Cookie has a shrine to him. He hasn't told us about yet. Gentleman Jack. He's the next one. Pasty white dudes. All right. Anyway, number one, I love Vince McMahon on commentary. Dude, he's so good. And this is crazy because it's after he did the like heel stuff. Like he's yeah. able to come back. To but he's full on Vince McMahon on so commentary. Good. At what? one point, The Rock sends mankind into literally the fourth row seats while Vince is on the mic just yelling, "Oh yeah, have a seat. Get a rock. Get him." <laughs> <laughs> It's so good, but he just goes back into his old school Dude, days, it's, like, yeah. automatic. Yeah, it's, it's got to be just like that, on. that learned that's, skill. Like once you're good at it, you're just good at it. Yeah, like, it, I there's, mean, he, there's a lot we hate about Vince, but that's one thing we I think we all can agree as a on. character. I love about him. And, in front of the camera and on the mic. Yeah. I love Vince, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think Aaron can learn a thing or two on commentary Ooh. from Vince. Uh, anyway, the Rock. The, so the Rock black, is just black, tossing black. chairs on the man. Black, black, black. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock is just tossing chairs on the man. Con whole time, I'm just like. Terry Funk would have done things slightly different here. Fuck you, Cookie. <laughs> Did y'all notice how The Rock casually steps on Mankind's head and then Mankind starts making those like squealing <laughs> pig noises? <laughs> <laughs> like an ode to our last match. That's yeah. where we learned it from. <laughs> Number two. The Rock putting Mr. Sacco in the oven. Oh. oh my God. He takes Mr. Sacco off of Mankind's hand, then starts doing a little the puppeteer action with the with the sock and asking Mankind if he wants to smell what The Rock is cooking right before he puts Mankind in the hot oven as well. So he throws a, the sock in there and then he throws Mankind in there. This is where I noticed that Mankind lost one of his boots somewhere. Yeah, I don't no know one knows where. where. He, he just lost it. <laughs> he just lost his shoe somewhere. <laughs> Number three. Yo, the Rock Smack Talk is unmatched. He said, I know you like your hot dog buns extra long, you sick freak. <laughs> <laughs> you have to love the 90s because you can say stuff like this. Well, I mean, like he doesn't like skinny white uh, hot dog buns like some people. You know? No, no. Uh, then, he throws, <laughs> then he throws Mankind into a car to clean paint, <laughs> clean, clean plates and tells him to stop making a mess. <laughs> Or he says the rock doesn't even know what this is. He takes literally takes a piece of bread and holds it up and he says, I don't even know what this is, and I'm gonna beat you over the head with it anyway. <laughs> so many great one liners, man. The rock saying uh saying some stuff to a random girl in the office. What, was, what, what about weird. the chip? The rock you talking to all these rock lines. Where, you, your, which where mankind's sitting there screaming and he got sauce in his eye oh, and rock, gra- in his rock eye. grabs a chip, <laughs> scoops it, eats it, and he goes, That's That's mild. <laughs> or, or the popcorn. <laughs> That's, That's too, too salty. <laughs> too much salt. <laughs> Dude, oh. he's no, like on another level. Oh man, number four. What, wait, 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 wait. I vividly remember like watching the scene where they break into the room with all the guys kind of sitting around and him hitting with the popcorn, <laughs> and my dad just going like throwing his hands up and walking. He's like, out "What room? is this? <laughs> this one you want to switch it over to?" Yeah, I don't want to see Stevie, <laughs> Stevie Wonder's on the other side. <laughs> Number four. Oh man, the ending. The ending's pretty funny, man. First off, random forklift with an operator in it, just chilling, waiting for his cutscene. And then the forklift is carrying a, a, a pallet of like five kegs on it. Mankind delivers his mandible claw. He drags the rock underneath the pallets, and then he tells the operator to please move out of the way. <laughs> Please, 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 can you please, move out of the way? Please. And then, of course, Vince is in the back, just like, what kind of scoundrel says please? What is what is this? Psychopath. He's going to run over him with the forklift. Anyway, Mankind delivers his mandible claw, drags him underneath it, tells the operator to move out of the way, and then he lowers the pallet very slowly on top of the rock and he's pins like, them one, two, three. He's got three. like six half barrels on there, too, man. He's got he some does, weight. He, there's a lot of weight on that forklift. I, I'm not going to lie. As a video but, production person, I love the reaction shots of the rock. The back and forth. Yeah. Cut, yeah. Back no, and forth. no, no, no. <laughs> You can tell it's totally pre-produced. Yeah, like it's not like that. yeah, yeah. They definitely cut back to that. Uh, it was it was a cheesy ending, but I loved it because uh, I, I don't know where the title from, comes from at, at any point. But uh, the palette didn't even touch the rock. People went home happy though with the mankind holding the title way above his head. Uh, this is his second title, and I think it's yeah. very last one. Well, I, think he's only I don't two-time know. Champion, uh, maybe. Anyway, anyway, uh, great match. But here comes my honorable mentions. 
Cookies, honorable mentions. Whoever put that barricade together, that part it literally, terrible. it woke me up. I mean, The Rock just whips mankind through the middle of a barricade, like near the still steps, and it just combusts. I remember watching this live, but I forgot that they migrate so far into the arena. Everywhere. Literally, every, literally everywhere. And literally outside of it as well. Um, and then The Rock gets on the mic. At one point, he does his little shtick. He gets on commentary with Vince McMahon about being the great one and being on halftime heat and then the camera just cuts to the fucking sock on mankind's <laughs> hand <laughs> it's just a funny scene it's like the cobra like yeah. santana Marilla, uh, morella's cobra yeah like it, it it's so well produced it is it is <laughs> oh man or the rock okay one of the best parts though the rock hiding behind the top of the stairs <laughs> with a fucking trash can <laughs> Why like is there a big full ass- trash can in an empty arena? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then he just busts him over the head with it and then kicks him down the stairs. Like 27, 27 flight, or, uh, flight, of sta- flight of stairs. There we go. <laughs> I'm Bunny falling down the stairs like the Eddie Murphy stand up. Like, he's still going. He yeah, just he- went down every flight of stairs. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus, help me. Help, please. Help yeah, me, help help me, help me. Jesus, please help me. Help, help me. Oh, I'm Lord, only halfway Lord, Lord. down. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! And was this not too long after he took the twenty-seven chair shots to the head, dude? It, it was right around this time. Is that why he was wearing the bandage on his Probably, head? Probably. Yeah. Oh my god, man! Dude, the Rock just mouthing off the mankind as he's beating his ass in the kitchen. He, at one point, he says, "You probably want some cotton candy, hun? You fat piece of monkey crap." <laughs> <laughs> That's your like, next. That's your next rugby oh taunt. Oh god, dude! This is next sevens jersey. Yeah, yeah it might be. <laughs> Fat no, piece we of all know it's gonna be piece of viewer. monkey crap. I might put twinks on the back. <laughs> 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 if we have a seven servant, oh, yeah. I don't think we will. Yeah, it's gonna be cookie dude. twinks. Oh my god, cookie. Uh, with that being said, what is your cookie count? Oh, this man, this gets five cookies. Really? Man. It gets five. I love this match. Hey, cookie, how much wrestling it's was classic. in this match? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of wrestling, but a lot more like kicks and elbows and stuff like that. But it was so entertaining. I, I love this match. It's classic. It's one I remember like my whole family being around. But you know, we're gonna watch this real quick. You know, yeah. the Super Bowl is going on. You have people over. It's something I definitely remember from my childhood. It's fun. It's it's great. It's neat that they timed it out exactly from beginning to end of the halftime thing. They were able to pre-produce it. They knew that they had 19 minutes and 30 seconds, or how, however long the match was. And they were able to time it out exactly. They probably cut out a bunch of stuff that, that they uh, they did, and then probably. they they just made it into this perfect. This perfect, like, look back at, at what we were watching in 1999. I mean, and they cut so much stuff from, like, from the arena all the way to the office to the outdoor parking lot area. I mean, like, the kitchen. Like, they put so much into 19 minutes. It was great. They told a great story. Uh, it was just perfect match all together. If all you right. I, no, I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was great. So, Cookie, you're going to have you're gonna have some really tough decisions uh, in, in a... You know, when we decide to, to, you know, wrap up this season, you're going to have some tough decisions on what the golden cookie is going to go to. I do, yeah. This is not a golden cookie nomination, though. Let me go ahead and throw Whoa. it out. It's not a golden cookie nomination. It's a five cookie, but it's not a golden cookie nomination. <laughs> There's a difference. Once again, the scale just goes askew. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've, I've already established this. Just because you get five cookies doesn't mean you're up for a golden cookie. Okay, okay. Oh, all right. Well, that we will. So you you have at least one golden cookie nomination, I think. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. For our high spot, uh, Tolbert, we, you know, we decided to be a little bit entertaining. Tolbert, you have got a, a current wrestling match from the last yeah, few months. Current. Yeah, very you, current, like a few weeks ago. You have got a match from NWA Power. You have got uh, the question mark against Zane Dawson. Yes. And, um, yeah, I didn't know this match took place. I watched a lot of Power. Excuse me. Oh God! Is that the Corona? Woo! Yeah, the Rona. Uh, it's uh, it's the Pilsners. It's the the Druid Pilsners from Heist Brewing. Oh, good, oh. good to hear. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Delicious. Anyway, yeah, NWA. I've, I've been watching a lot of Power lately, especially since our boys, the Dawsons, have been on it. I'm also a big fan. I put it on at the bar a lot. I watch it a lot. It's one of my favorite, you know, current wrestling shows on. Um, it's an empty arena, but it's it's a small stage to begin with. They only have a hard camera side of fans. So taking away the fans, 
it doesn't I, I feel like it doesn't affect it that much right you still have a lot of crew around you still have the uh, infamous NWA uh, uh, table right you know to be interviewed at um, you know so it still has a good feel about it but uh, Aaron Stevens and the Mongrovian question mark we mm-hmm. still don't know who the fuck he is well I, I know he yells he yells from Mongrovia no you don't you, you've never been to Mongrovia you don't know Mongrovia <laughs> <laughs> please get out I, of here. I have a I have a hunch yeah anyway so it, they've been wreaking havoc over the NWA for quite some time now right Aaron Stevens he's just, he's a dick man he's uh <laughs> he, he holds the NWA television title right right and right. Uh, he's put stripes on it yeah, he's, he looks he's good. A three stripe. I kind of like the gimmick. Yeah, yeah. I, I did too. So uh, I don't know if y'all have watched any NWA. It's great. Check it out every Tuesday. Um, Aaron Stevens is he? He's the heel right now. Yeah. He's uh, wreaking havoc, like I said, and he's got the Mongrovian, the question mark by his side as his enforcer. Yeah, and he's an expert Mongrovian karate. karate. Not karate. It's karate. Okay. Right. Anyway, pretty entertaining stuff. Well, uh, they uh, they've been fucking with Ricky Starks lately, and uh, fucked him up and pulled some bad shit. So they put him up against the Dawsons. Mm-hmm. Hey, you boys, we're gonna try to level you out some. You've been, you know, running amok. You know, we don't like what you've been doing. We're gonna send our <laughs> send our enforcers after you, the big boys, right? Well, Aaron doesn't like it too much. He sets up a stipulation like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna have this match. We're gonna put Zane Dawson up against the question mark, right? We'll do it. But the loser has to read some Shakespeare, Ugh. right? And he he's dressed in Elizabethan yeah. attire. Yeah, he's got a scroll. He's got the Mongrovian by his side, talking shit like he always <laughs> does. <laughs> Fucking, he's such a dick. <laughs> anyway. I love the hate for the question mark. Oh yeah. man, you know, the question mark. I don't know. He teeter totters a little bit. You <laughs> he's a tweener. Quite, you don't know quite how to cookie, feel cookie, about him. Cookie, you said him. tweener, not, not a tweener. Oh, he didn't say tween. Yeah, don't, oh, don't, don't get excited. Oh, damn it, uh, he, he ain't little. Um, anyway, so match starts. Zane's just got the toughest style. His brother's there to back him up on the ringside, you know, give him some moral support. Dawson brothers are going to prevail. You know, uh, Mongrovian has a pretty impressive record. Not going to lie. Yeah. Question mark. Yeah. He, he's undefeated at the time. Oh, yeah. In WA. No one's beat him. Nobody. Right? I, I kind of had some, uh, some hope for my boy Zane. He's a big boy. He outsizes question mark a That's little right. bit, right? He's mean. He's put me through a table. I felt that power. <laughs> I forgot. I don't know how I forgot. He's, he's I have the gift not, on my computer. He's right? not a nice guy at all by any means. He he's not. He's, he's, around. You, better, he's, you better watch he, your words right now. Yeah, he might bust he, through that door. Well, he takes his job seriously. He's, you know, don't fuck with him, right? <laughs> so, all right, my boy's got a chance, right? You know, he's, uh, he's a mean guy, but I think he's got a chance, right? That Mongrovian sly, man. Zane goes right after him, charges at him, man. He's going to get him. He gets some moves in, man. He gets some power moves, gets some punches. But, uh, man, that Mongrovian karate, dude, I swear yeah. to God, it's sneaky, man. He just gets in those chops. But that Mongrovian fucking spike, man, that should be illegal. <laughs> yeah. That should be I fucking agree. outlaw. I agree. I do not like it. I'm going to say it right here, right now. It's an illegal move. I don't like it. It should be barred. I love when Tover K babes. He's <laughs> yellow. He's, he's on my fucking K babes. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's real. This shit's real right now. Tell him, Tover. Damn. Talk to him. That Talk to him. Should be outlawed. <laughs> it should be outlawed like the jackknife power bomb. <laughs> Goddamn right. <laughs> the pile driver. God damn, it's not right. It's it illegal. Ain't right. I agree. So, I agree. It ain't right. No, it's no dude, it's not. Any chops to throw like no, anyway. He's had a lot of time to think about this. Zane this puts up a good fight against him, some great offense, but that fucking spike comes into play, dude. And it just ain't right, man. And he takes my boy Zane down with a pin from that fucking Mongrovian spike. He, he needs to get on the right side. <laughs> I know he was a foreigner. He's new to the USA, but he's fallen in with the wrong crowd. Oh, man. I know. Yeah. Anyway. So shame. my boys have to read some Shakespeare. Because they lost the match. Did you guys but, read a lot of Shakespeare in Fayetteville? Uh, in school, we did. Yep. My uh, my brother being, he's working on his doctorate in English literature. He's a big fan of Shakespeare. Was your brother in any remedial classes? <laughs> No, he was a. You're talking a lot of shit today, Aaron. He was teaching the classes. 
one remedial class <laughs> just because I skip fourth period a lot and like to go swim in the creek. What? All right. <laughs> What are you, what are you hot friend? What is this <laughs> shit? Rockfish Creek, baby. We take some girls back there. All right, all right. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we had a swimming hole. We had a rope swing. You pass the snowball stand on the way oh to the my creek, God. Dude. This is the most redneck dude. shit I've ever heard Was this life. the fourth grade, as you said? No, this was like ninth grade. Uh, this was okay. fourth period. This is oh, ninth bad, grade. Bad, going you know, it was way down yonder in the Chattahoochee. And yeah. It used to get hotter than a hoochie coochie. I straightened my act up, though, and I graduated with all A's and B's. So yeah, Joker was sitting in that remedial class looking around. He's like, I don't I don't want to be with these people. I sandbagged the first two, and then I made up for it in the back end. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of swimming in Rockfish Creek, though. You know, There's they, a lot of other things in Rockfish about. Creek, too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, good match. Yeah. Uh, but my boys have to read some Shakespeare. Getting That's back, right. Getting back to the match. That's right. Um... Well, they're they're men of their word. You know, they may be bad guys sometimes, but they're they're, they're guys of their they honor their word. Right. Um, and they read it. I mean, Zane's having a little trouble because he just caught that spike to the throat. Yeah. I don't know. Not many people could still stand right. after taking that spike, but he does, and he tries his best. And old Dave says, "Hey, let's put some conviction yeah. into this." Yeah. And they show off their true talents. Beautiful. Um, yeah, they could be on Broadway. Yeah. How did Aaron Stevens take it? Um, he's dick as usual, <laughs> uh, flaunting around. Uh, but he did not like the reading uh, of of the words. Uh -huh. And he proceeded to puke in a bucket. Right. While that he found under the ring. <laughs> Mongrovian, while Crushed Mark held back his boyish little girly ponytail. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. But... <laughs> I, I just felt like, man, I thought Zane had it there for a second, dude. I really did. And then he just, he, he didn't. <sighs> All right, Talbert. Give me, that, give me the most depressed Mon haiku Mon I've ever heard. Mongrovian <laughs> and Spike. That's, the, that's, that's one. That's got to be one. Uh, oh. Cookie loves the twinks. That's five. <laughs> that's five. <laughs> uh, oh, that's yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> damn it damn it that's right you learned to shut the fuck up now uh, didn't you <laughs> alright let's hear the haiku oh uh, man alright no one to witness <laughs> Mongrovian hits the spike boys read some Shakespeare that's right oh, oh man. man but I'm here to say that move should be outlawed <laughs> God damn it. I'm writing a letter <laughs> to Billy Corgan right <laughs> yeah. now. Torbert's got a lot of time on his hands. William Dear Corgan. Mr. Corgan. Uh, Mongrovian Spike should be outlawed and, um, you know, maybe drop a new album. Uh, <laughs> William uh, William Corbin, uh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Homer Simpson, Smiling Politely. <laughs> I love that episode. Oh, man. Thank you for listening to $2 Steak. <laughs> Dude, wait, wait. Speaking of the Simpsons, we've been making Simpsons references all week, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. If, if you ever go on YouTube, there's a ch channel, Botcha Mania. Right. We've all oh, watched yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. There is a, a, a clip voiceover where Jake the Snake makes his debut right. in AEW like he did last week, right? Right. The episode of the Isotopes baseball team. <laughs> there, if you watch this current Botcha Mania... It's a voiceover of Dr. Birds or Mr. Birds telling him to shave the no, sideburns, sideburns? <laughs> with Mattingly? the snake in the ring. It's hilarious. You shave those sideburns, Mattingly. Shave those sideburns, Mattingly. <laughs> Anyways. <sorry>. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I don't know That's what we're going to watch next week. Well, right, we, we'll see. Is there going to be a society? Oh, well, I thought we were uh, we we're going to put a little twist on this. Was that? No, 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 no. Seven days from now will still be... March. March. Oh, uh, okay. So we're going to start that in April. So. But we are starting this in April. Okay. Should we, are we just going to tease it? We won't tell them. What no, we're we can. Do. We can tell them. We can tell them. No, did you just, just fucking pull it out? Keep the suspense. No, tease, keep, they still tease. don't know. Keep the suspense. Tune in. Find out what we'll be doing in April. Oh, no, my. $2 dollar stake. Not going to WrestleMania. God no. damn it, Mike. Wait a minute. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that we should implement this the week that Mike has to go on paternity leave because his wife is, is having a baby. I have no idea what's going on in my life. You're right starting now. a tag team, Mike. 
Start training him now. Elliot is well on his way. Oh, Elliot's yeah. been. I, I can. Elliot's going to do great. Dude, just do I babysat him last that. week. Get Uncle Zane to come over to teach yeah, him how dude. to chop at age two. He's already two. got a mean elbow drop. And I mentioned dude. it last week, dude. I I hit him with that. The, uh, the oh, he no sold it yeah, in the days. Yeah. No sold that in the days. And I'm just like, dude. You're ridiculous. You're a freak. You're gonna be. <laughs> he'll be, be the next Ric Flair. Give him a Mongrovian spike and see if he's. He I would never. Do, I would never do that. <laughs> I, honestly, I think your sons might grow up to be pro wrestlers at this point. <laughs> We're fine with that. They've got. Been, they've got some good influences. He's been indoctrinated. He's already starting to do his Daniel Bryan yeses. He does. <laughs> I, That's I, good. I thought, That's yeah, all he watches. He grabs the Daniel Bryan action figure, raises the arms, and goes, "Yes, yes." yes I'll tell yes. you, when when Elliot was born, they brought him back. What day did you get? You brought him back on a Sunday, right? The next day, he was watching Monday Night Raw with us yeah. in the Austin three sixteen onesie, right? In his, well, he was that was, that was a little bit. Oh, that, that was, was a couple. Yeah. Oh, okay, he was also a, loves Charlotte Flair with the big old titties. He Good used to stare God. At the screen. Good he God. Used to just literally will will stop doing what he's doing and stare at Charlotte Flair. Oh, you know who he doesn't like? Darby Allen and Finn Balor. Thank you. For you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dollar steak. We're gonna make a sure he loves wrestling tweets. podcast. <laughs>